for that. Uh, Paul, if you don't mind coming forward, thank you. You're doing amazingly well. How's the energy levels getting lower and lower? You're needing that coffee? Won't be long. Great, thanks, thanks Paul. Thanks, Wendy. Uh, good to join you folks. I didn't realise sitting at the front that there are so many of you here today. So uh, I'll try not to keep you too long. My usual hour presentation, I will cut back to about 15 minutes. Should be on, I think. Is that okay? Is that better? Okay, sorry about that. Uh, the other good news for you is I've got a wee bit of a sore throat, so I might give out before the 15 minutes, so it could be your, your lucky day entirely. Now, I work for SCBO, which is the Scottish Council for Voluntary Organisations. We've been around since uh, World War II. An older person, uh, but we're a pretty active older person, I would like to think, and it's our members, including many of the organisations here today, who help to keep us young. Uh, what I want to do is to take you to the slides. Uh, <coughs> any technical help available? They've disappeared entirely, I think. Anyway, well, we're trying to get these back on track. Ah, good news, thanks very much. I'm going to share a couple of wee stories uh, from my way to here today. Uh, and you all have wee stories, I guess, that you might share as well over lunchtime. First story was that I was crossing a road and the lollipop man, who I've seen lots of times in that spot, helped me across the road. Now, I could manage across on my own. Uh, there were no kids there, but he always does it. He always jumps out and helps you get over the road. And about half a mile later on my journey, I was going through a, an underpass, a wee tunnel, and there's a busker there who is often there and he was playing a a nylon string guitar and, and he whistles along when he's uh, playing. If you put money in his guitar case, uh, then he stops his whistling and he says thank you. And then as I got to Glasgow and got off the train at Mount Florida Rather than Mount Vernon, luckily, uh, I was getting a bit of a buzz walking down to Hamden Park. Even though there's no football on today, I still think it's exciting and it brings out the kid in me a wee bit to think about coming here. And that might be the same for some of you. And you'll get the relevance of that in a wee while, hopefully. What I'm going to do, though, is to talk a little bit about a programme of work that we're doing in Eastern Bartonshire, uh, not far from here. The work is really situated in the context of health and social care integration. Uh, we were fortunate to get money from the Scottish Government to help us with our activity. And what we've got to demonstrate is an improved understanding of how investment in community capacity can enable prevention at primary and locality <coughs> levels. So it's about trying to check demand on the system and to improve understanding around that. And I guess that for me, we are trying to support the most important of the, the nine integration outcomes, which are that people are able to look after and improve their own health and to live well for longer. So that's pretty powerful stuff if we're able to achieve that. Conference is called Connecting Connectors, and I guess that one of the things that's been absolutely key to us are the partners that we work with. I know a few of them are here today, the third sector interfaces, and an absolutely key partner for us has been Eastern Bartonshire Voluntary Action. But not just those colleagues, the local authority have been key to us, the Community Health Partnership, which will be around for a little while longer, but uh, like most of you will be winding up, I know there are colleagues from both of these organisations here today have been absolutely key, with great support from the Joint Improvement Team, and from a national group of bodies, including the Alliance, including Voluntary Health Scotland, Czechs, Scottish Government, who give us some high-level high guidance on whether the direction we are taking is a good one, or how we want to think about doing things a little bit differently and better. What do we bring to the table? Well, we like to think that we can draw on networks and intelligence that we can deploy at local level that will help our partners in Eastern Bartonshire uh, do the things that they want to do uh, to the very uh, best extent possible. You'll recognise at least a couple of the faces there. The first one is the late Campbell Christie, uh, and we take our inspiration in, in, in a big way from the, the Christie Commission's uh, report on the reform of public services. In the middle, it's SDVO's former convener, Dr Alison Elliott, who was also on the Christie Commission and injected a whole lot of that community-based content uh, into the report. And the picture on the right, if you can see it OK, is a group of people in Ochenairn, in eastern Bartonshire, just borders Glasgow. 
uh, and they're getting to grips with how to build healthier and happier communities where they are. And they're the most exciting and important part of what we're up to. But Campbell and Alison were obviously very big players in terms of setting the direction of travel for Scotland. I'm not going to make you read all the Christie Commission uh, recommendations and priorities. They're up here. You'll get them again for reference. But if you're feeling a bit stuck, if you're feeling a bit low, if you're thinking things aren't working, go back and look at these principles because they will give you a wee buzz and a wee push forward to keep on doing what it is you're trying to achieve to make a difference to people's lives. Of course, the national priorities are all well and good, but they only matter if they've got a local context to them. What we've picked out is one of the headline priorities from the Single Outcome Agreement for Eastern Bartonshire. As you'll appreciate, there's a whole lot of more detail that lies beneath that priority, but it was absolutely essential that our work was located in what matters in that part of the country. And what you'll see here is the opening of Eastern Bank to revolve attractions at new premises with a few politicians and a few folk from our sector in the frame. What do we do? Well, there's a whole lot involved. One of the big things that we do is to build relationships, to get to know people and what matters to them, to understand their priorities, to also understand the things that are dead hard, the things that are a challenge for them. So we spent an awful lot of time in getting to know people and what, what was important to them. We linked priorities at a national and local level, as I've mentioned, and very importantly, we got out and about. So we went to meet lots of folk with an interest in health and social care, most importantly, in improving it. And we worked with them to find things that they had in common. We, we worked with them to understand where they wanted to get to and what was making it hard to get to where they wanted to be. And we sought to build relationships, not just for the day that they got together, but relationships that would endure in the longer term. What was interesting for us is that a great many people that we engaged with hadn't necessarily been in the same space at the same time before. And that's important, and I'll come back and explain why in a wee while. It's all very well bringing folk together. You know, it's quite nice, people enjoy it. But we also did a little bit more than that by providing some tailored support for a group of organisations that benefit from it. And tailored support is code for two things. One was practical support to help organisations be much clearer about their outcomes and how they want to achieve them. But there was also money on the table. But the important thing for our programme is that money wasn't the incentive to get involved. And in fact, even organisations that didn't get any resource at all enjoyed the experience and are continuing to work with us on an ongoing basis. So that was a positive piece of learning for us. The Milo system, which I wouldn't talk about uh, today, it's basically a database of some 37,000 voluntary organisations. It complements what Alice offers. Uh, it's also been important for us. There are some 800 or so uh, third sector organisations in Eastern Bartonshire. A great many of them make a difference to health and happiness. So we've been extending the data there. And it's about making change happen because people get out of bed in the morning to make a difference, to tackle issues that are challenging and difficult. And so we are there to help them do that. Photograph here is Paul Gray. He's the Chief Executive of the NHS in Scotland. He was out in Eastern Bartonshire having a look at our work on Friday past. One of the important things he talks about here is culture change in the context of integration. It's arguably the biggest part of public sector reform in a generation. How do you help people make change? Well, you've got to get in alongside them and take steps with them and support them and encourage them and help them up when they trip over and find things are a bit tricky. So we're active in that arena. This is Sir Harry Burns. I uh, don't need to read the quote to you, but he's been an inspiration in terms of taking a much different approach to how we look at the health of ourselves and our communities. And this is an organisation involved in recovery in Eastern Bartonshire called GRACE. And that principle of self-help is absolutely embedded in their work. What you've got here is a couple of projects that we've, we've funded. The one on the left is Rosebank Allotments. Uh, growing, doing things with nature, very important in relation to mental health, as many of you will know. What they've done is to put in raised beds to make it accessible to people with mobility problems, maybe in wheelchairs, couldn't access uh, the opportunities otherwise. On the right, it's Twicker Community Action, who have got a healthy living centre. Again, growing and the, the importance of food has been a key thing for them. They've organised a food delivery service to people who are housebound. And interestingly, they found out that people also want books when they bring the food round. So some side benefits there and some social capital being developed as a result of their work. 
Nice photo here, a uh, skillful young chap up in the top of the picture. This is Eastern Bartonshire Bike Co-op, uh, really inspiring lot. One of the things they've got is young people uh, delivering messages, shopping uh, to older housebound people in the Auchinairn area. So you've got intergenerational work, uh, an extension of what they were doing already. What we've got here is a couple of images that our colleagues at Iris produced about local assets. So you've got a nice cafe in Kirky, if you've ever been there, uh, check it out. And on the left hand side, some of the third sector organisations that make a big difference to health and happiness in that part of the country. What's early learning? Well, we got an American beat poet earlier on in the shape of Ginsberg. I'm going to give you a German 19th century philosopher uh, called Hegel for those first four bullet points. Because what we've noticed, I think, and it's been significant, the importance of recognition, knowing who's about, knowing people that are there for you and with you, has been key. Not just recognising that they're there, but understanding what they do and learning to respect what they do. Working beyond that to really value it and hold them in esteem. And finally, to work in partnership. Now, Hegel, in fact, talks about friendship and love, but I'd like to make you too sensitive to go down uh, that route uh, so early in the day. So partnership will do for the time being. We've also attempted to link the macro and the micro. What's that about? Well, it's about the fact that very often small grassroots organisations do good things, but they make no connection with local policy or national policy. Doing the good things is what matters to them. And that means that their activity is sometimes undervalued uh, by policymakers. We're trying to make the connection between the two. We're also very clear that we need to be a bit more human in our roles. We need to do our jobs well. But let's take off professional armour and recognise that we're not so different, really. If you're not convinced about that, look at the Oxfam uh, work on the Humankind Index. They say that rich and poor people, by and large, want to achieve the same type of things. And we've also taken an approach where if the going gets tough, it's not about saying, hey folks, you got that wrong. It's about saying, well, that's good, thanks for telling us, and how can we help you and learn from it? People work better when you're on their side rather than on their back. Almost there. Uh, earlier on, we heard from uh, Shona and Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh benefits from really good social networks. Tigger being around is bound to keep you pretty chirpy, I would suggest. So when he says that today's my favourite day, uh, that's a good thing and it's good, it's good to be Winnie the Pooh in that context. We heard from Sarah about Kev's story, who was going from a pretty tough place to a better place. And we heard in Glenn's poem, a little quote from it where he talked about the lack of hope and the uselessness. So we've got three different points in a spectrum there, and you will know from your experience that there are far too many people in Scotland who would share Glenn's type of experience. There's nothing good to look forward to. Your days are the same, sometimes they're worse, sometimes they're slightly better, but it's not brilliant. And that's why the positive horizons really matter. So when I told you the wee stories about the lollipop man, I had a fair hunch he would be there this morning. When I told you the story about the busker, there are a fair hunch he would be there. Both good starts to my day, both gave me a kick. Coming here to the football stadium was another kick. Getting a chance to, to meet you is a further kick. Positive horizons really matter. And if you take one thing from my input today, it's about how we can do more to create circumstances where good things happen for people. Prevention is very important, I don't undersell that, but the context of good things happening in people's lives is perhaps more powerful still. And if you're East in Bartonshire, uh, one positive horizon is the Campsie Hills, which are pretty nice in this photo. What we want to achieve through this type of work is a new paradigm. If you're interested in testing it out in your area, uh, please feel free to come and speak to me either today or at a later stage. We've got a, a little booklet that's going from for work that we'll make sure is made available to you. And my contact details, should you need them at any stage, are up here. So thanks for your time and your attention, and enjoy your break when it comes. Thank you.